Waiter, they'll be right over to help you, okay? Oh, is it? Oh, she's getting dressed. Doing okay? Yeah, doing oh, yes. all right. Yeah. 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 Very happy to be here, you know? Jennifer Jones. We are honored to have you here, but Pierre, darling. No, no. We have a table over here that has an order. Who, who's sitting over there? Steve McQueen? <laughs> Did Paul Pierre... Newman? Who? Nobody, right? From the tower in front of Jennifer Jones is from that movie. Don't darling, you know? did you tell the lovely Jennifer about the bully base tonight? A bully base. Oh, perhaps. Her drink is getting. Would you like to start your dinner with the BC Swap? Oh, the salad. The salad. The salad. salad. What about the uh, souffle? Darling, the souffle. Just Nobody wants this salon. Steve McQueen is waiting for you. Where is Steve McQueen? I will attend to this lovely Jennifer Jones. I think that's Robert Redford over there. Maybe you oh, can talk to him. Darling. Ah, Madam. No? Darling. Uh, I always have to go in the back. This, I to you about this. Ah, this is the first time I go on the floor. Darling. You always tell me go back in the kitchen, go cook the soup. I don't want to cook the soup. No. I want to talk to Jennifer Jones. <laughs> This is my life too. Uh, I didn't leave France for this. I'm in Nyack, New York. It's 28 degrees outside. I'm sure you can understand this woman. Uh, I, I don't know what you mean. What's wrong with you? Come on! Jennifer, I apologize. We're 
We're in the airport. We're at a gate. Mm. Wait for an airplane. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Money's on its way. Offshore accounts. I'm not worried. Oh, well, can you, can you, can you know about this? What is going on? Did you know about this? Oh, look at me. No, no, look. Did you know about this? You see what's going on in Ukraine? Ukraine. Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine. <laughs> oh, dear Russian Lord. Russian spies. Russian spies. Anybody here Russian? <laughs> 
Look at that fucker. He looks over there. That's who right there. What? What do you know yeah. about this? Well, my last name is Mikulovsky, so all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Polish. I mean, kind of. Well, it doesn't make a difference. Does it end in a Y or an I? <laughs> It depends. Oh. Tell me, look at me, what is it end in? Here? Why? 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 We're a fucking uh, I mean, come on, it's fine. You know anything about all this? About, oh, this? Yeah, this alert. This oh, it's going to be over real quick soon, so you're not going to notice anything, so. What is he talking about? We got like 4,500 nukes. So Are we going to die? What do you think? Why are you standing here, then? I had to make sure it actually yeah, happened. Is your wife saying the passion? No, no, that's the right one. No, not my wife. That's the other one. That's the other one? It's double spine. Double spine. The Americans are paying for it. Get out of here. You're Italian, right? Thank you. I don't like the other one. Get out of here. Get out Oh, my God, trouble. All right, everybody say a prayer. You religious? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Say a prayer. Keep going. Forgive me for all my sins. Okay, now, now, now stop the prayer. Everybody stop the prayer. You ready? Huh? You ready? Okay. It happened already. You know it. Oh, shit. It's already done. What? Yeah. Okay? You're not thirsty, are you? You want to go to the bathroom? Anybody hungry? Huh? Anybody pee in their pants yet? Did you poison us? So what does that mean? The dead. What's purgatory? Somebody's going to come and get you and bring you to the spot. You're going to spend eternity. Clean. on spontaneity, we work on reactions, we work on the breath, the breath meaning that we breathe, and therefore we're able to speak. If we can speak, we can inhabit character. It's that simple. We don't teach any type of method here. Uh, it's, uh, I never worked that way and I'm okay. So <laughs> I want to thank you for being here, for encouraging everyone, uh, because this is always a work in progress. This is about uh, four years coming up in March that the workshop was initiated here at Maureen's Jazz and uh, with the patronage of Brianne, Brianne by the way, who's here. Uh, she's also our uh, producer and with her fabulous husband, uh, uh, David Budway. So, I want you to know uh, that a lot of the members of the workshop do work. As a matter of fact, uh, Juliana, you just uh, made your own independent film. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody, uh, everybody's on the right path, and it's a, it's a great thing. And this is as much of my um, uh, what's the word? As much of my resume as my acting is, because I'm very proud of the ability to come in and impart. I'm not a teacher. I'm a coach. I'm an acting coach. I am not. I, if you got it, we'll work with you. Okay? So, what you're going to see tonight are pieces, bits and pieces of scenes and monologues that uh, they've been working on for uh, quite a few weeks. Um, perfection, though, we don't strive for that, but we do strive for honesty. And uh, we never use the word performance in our workshop. We are not performers. Again, we inhabit a character. We don't play. There's a difference between the two, a very profound difference. So, without further ado, I'm going to leave the stage. We'll be back later for a brief uh, Q&A at the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed. Now, I really need you to keep your cell phones off, okay, and conversation to zero. You know, they're up here, they're concentrating. That's what this is all about. And if any of you break that rule, 
I know where the fuck you live, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. say really three minutes from the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today now either we heal as a team or we're gonna crumble inch by inch play by play until we're finished we're in hell right now gentlemen and we can either stay here and get the shit kicked out of us or we could fight our way back into the light. We can crawl right out of hell. Now I can't do it for you. You know, I look at all these young faces and I say, I made every fucking wrong choice a middle-aged man could possibly make. I pissed away all my money. I chased off anyone who's ever loved me. And lately, I can't really stand the face I see when I look in that mirror. You know, you get old in life and you start losing stuff. I mean, that, that's just part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You learn that life and football becomes this game of inches. The margin for error is so small, one step too fast, you don't quite catch it. One second too slow, you don't quite make it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every play, they're in every break of the game, in every minute, in every second. You know, I think in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's gonna get that inch. And if I got any fight left in me, it's because I'm willing to die for that inch. And that's what makes the fucking difference between winning and fucking losing, between living and dying. Now I can't do it for you. I told you I'm too old. I want you to look at the guy next to you. And I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch for you. Because at the end of the day, when we add up all those inches, that's a team. That's a camaraderie. And that's all this is. You're gonna see a guy who will fight for that inch. And that's all it is. That's football, gentlemen. <coughs> now, what are you gonna do? Everybody loved this. Beautiful. All my Love friends it. told me, amigas, they were going, where did you do your nails? I want my nails done like that. Yeah. I said, my daughter, I my guess. daughter did. How is, tell me about work. How Good, work? I have this one client. <clears throat> she is beautiful. Just so Just nice. like you. <laughs> but she has the nicest shoes, the nicest car. I, I swear, she has the nicest life in my eyes. Well, that's the life you're gonna have when you have your own shop and you get your certification and you go, yes, it's gonna happen. 
But I you think she married to a lawyer. No, no. You're gonna have your own stuff. You go to school, you buy your own thing, you don't you have to give nobody nothing. What's yours is yours. You know what I made for you today? What? Ropa vieja. No way. Oh yes. I hope you made rice. I made I made rice store. and amarillos. Mama. I never thought I'd see you then, you know? I think they're gonna keep a guy like me then? No. You look so good. Come on, open it. For me? Thanks. Surprise! All of this is gonna be over. It's done in the day. My kid sister won't have to work in no beauty bar. And my mom, she doesn't have to sew in no. Just on me, my mom. It's a success. That's why I went come over and pull. And to show you what a good boy I've been. You and the others. Things are different, Mama. I work for an anti-Castro group. I'm an organizer. I get a lot of political contributions. Sure. A gun sticking in somebody's face. Mama. That's how. You know, all we hear about in the papers is animals like you. Is Cubans like you who are giving a bad name to our people. People who come here, people who work hard, people who send their children to school. Mama, what are you saying? People who attack my son? I wish I had one. He's a bum. He was a bum then and he's a bum now. Who do you think you are? We haven't seen you in five years, cinco años. You suddenly walk in here, you throw some money around and think you're gonna get my respect? You think you're gonna buy me with jewelry? You think you can walk into my house with your hotshot clothes and your jail manners and make fun of us? That is not how I raised Gina to be. I am not gonna let you hurt her. You understand me? And I don't need your money. I work for my living. I don't want you in this house anymore. So come on, get up. Go. Come on. Get out. Come on. Tony, please. And take that lousy money with you, it stinks. Why do you have to spoil it for everybody? Tony, I'm sorry. Gina, Tony, stay here. Please don't leave. Gina! No, no, Mama. He's no good, Gina! Mama. Sorry. Mama, ever since Papa left, she's... Okay, Papa. We never have to. Look, I know you did some bad things in the army. I know you got into some trouble. The communists are always trying to tell me. I just want you to know it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter how long you've been gone. Five or ten years. You're my blood, always. 
No, Tony, please. Take this money, you need it. What will they tell her? You don't tell her anything, but give her some sometimes. Go out, do some things, get some fun out of her. What you gonna do, beat yourself up the other night then? Of course you get back in. I didn't mean to bother you. I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I'm sorry, I didn't see. You're young. You're all dressed up. You're off for a good time. You don't mean bothered by me. I'll, 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 get, I'll, I'll get out of here right, right away. I'll get me. Yeah, I was a, yeah, you're a little, little lady. Beautiful little lady. You're, you're together. You're, you're a together guy. Good for you. God bless you. That's what I say. Somebody's got to make it in this world. Might as, might as well be you, right? Good for you. That's, that's what I say. I'll leave, I'll leave you, I'll leave you. See, people, people like me, but I'm, I'm a loser. I've always been a loser. I'm always gonna be a loser. I'm a loser because I'm a drunk. <laughs> Yeah, I was a drunk. When I was a baby, I was a baby drunk. <laughs> just a good for nothing drunken bum. Just you don't you don't even you don't even want to look at me, buddy. You don't Don't even waste your time. Just 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 put me in a trash can and flush it! Listen to me, okay, bud? Just get rid of me. I'll leave you. I just want to say, good for you, good for you. You work hard, right? You deserve everything you got. in this world. Never do. No, 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 no. Don't they give you? They give you, they give you a, fr a fried egg deal. That's what you get in this world. A fried egg deal. 
fried egg deal. You know what I mean by fried egg deal? They, they flip you this way and, it, and they, flip, they flip you that way and then it's just like a fried egg. You, you never know what side you're gonna wind up on. That's the deal right there. You never know. You never know. You wake up one morning, you're sunny side up. And then the next morning, you, you know, scramble again. You never know what's gonna come next. Good for you. Good for you. That's what I say, good for you. Me? me. Uh, hang on. I'm good for nothing. I'm good for nothing. I'll leave. Whoa. But you know what? If I wasn't where I was, you couldn't be where you was. You can't have a top without a bottom. It's impossible. It can't be done, right? And you see, you're, you're, you're on the top. Because I'm on the bottom. We're like two sides of the same coin, you see? And you never know which way that, that coin's gonna flip. Here we go. You never know which way that coin's gonna go. That coin, right there. You got a coin for me, buddy? It's just a joke. I was just joking. I got a limo waiting right around the corner. Can't make him wait all day. Thanks for listening to me, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Full of bourbon and a can of soup. Can of soup. Gonna have to wait till we close. 
Meet me in the parking lot and don't say nothing to no one. Eh, it was okay. Little fat, little bald. I've had worse paying less. Son of a bitch. What a drag. Hope he's quick, hope he's good. What a night. What a light. What a place. Then I said, you're gonna have to take me back to my place after because my mother takes care of the kid and she worries about me, you know? And he smiled like a snake and said, sure thing, babe. And all I could see were dollar signs and the bills paid. And the bills paid. What a snake. Hope he's quick. Hope he's good. And after that, he said, is the car okay? Because his wife was at his place and a motel cost too much and wasn't worth it time-wise. Sure, I hissed. Would you, baby, anywhere would be hot in heaven. And he drooled where he drooled and my stomach fell out and my heart sank leagues. I thought, such a sleaze, such a turd. I'm better than this. But the rent's due and it's winter and I'm cold to my soul and down and under and I need some loving any loving. Besides, the cash will keep me warm. And I'll be warmer in the morning when I forget about tonight and the snake man in the parking lot. Really alone, but with him. <laughs> the snake man. <laughs> the snake man and me. <laughs> Sincere sincerity goes a long way. It's what the business is built on. I don't know that I can be that sincere. Look, be careful what you say, because any, even an inadvertent word spoken to some two-bit has-been actor can come back to haunt you. I've seen it happen. Haunt you? Yeah. Look, you'll be at a party, mind your own business, and some actor you said boo to a hundred years ago will come up to you, spill a drink on you, Trying to ruin your night and embarrass you. I've seen it happen. But, Harry, what exactly do you mean, come back to haunt you? They're not our enemies and they're not our friends. They're talent, Peter. They're talent. And talent either books or it doesn't. Red meat, dead meat. Where is that waitress? I'm going to order a sandwich. Where's that waitress? Hey, waitress! Waitress! <laughs> Where's that roast beef and rye? I'll have a roast beef on rye too. Ah, uh, make my toast. Thanks, hon. So, anyway, I get nice to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get to the agency this morning, and he's just going off, just erupting, <laughs> carrying on about some deal with TriStar that went kaput. Well, what was he getting mad at you? You didn't do anything. No, but I'm the agent, so I catch the grief. It's always my fault, right? <laughs> Fuck it. 
Yeah. Every time it's my fault. Then I try to get him to calm down, saying, what is going on, boss? Talk to me, talk to me, tell me what happened. But he just won't, he's just erupted. He's just acting like this shit means something, but we know it doesn't. It's all bullshit. Bullshit. Right, whoever's bullshit. Big, big, bigger wins. <laughs> At the end of the day, you tally all up, count the winners, cut the losers, and then you go out at night, go out to some dive, have a few cocktails, if you're lucky you'll get late, and then you go home to the family, kiss the wife, kiss the kids, watch a little TV, have some dinner, and then go to sleep. Pleasant dreams. That's what the business is all about, Peter. I'll drink to that, the show biz. That show business. Thank you. You ask me why? You ask me why I should talk to him, answer him about what he said to me, about how he treated me? He hath disgraced me. He injured me half a million. He laughed at my losses. He mocked at my gains. He thwarted my bargains. He hated my enemies and he called my friends. And why? Because I'm a Jew. Hath not a Jew eyes? Hath not a Jew hands? Organs, dimensions, affections? Passions? Fed with the same food? Hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases as a Christian is? If you prick us, do we not bleed? And if you poison us, do we not die? And if you tickle us, do we not laugh? And if you wrong us, shall we not revenge? If a Jew wrong a Christian, what should his sufferance be? Revenge. And if a Christian wrong a Jew, what should his humility be? Why revenge? The villainy you teach me, I will execute, and it shall go hard. And it shall go hard. down the fucking toilet and I'm sorry. Okay? I'm sorry is this is roll of toilet paper. They're growing whole forests for people to wipe their asses with on their I'm sorry's. Okay? Be a tree for one day and see that that tree over there is going to be maybe music paper. The boss is going to make 40 million writing some poor slob can't get work song on. That tree is going to be $10 bills. Get passed around. Buy things. Hear stories. Mean something. Uh, headlines, box scores, some great movie script or book. Uh, Jack Nicholson's gonna mark you all up. Say whatever the fuck he wants to out in some desert. You're supposed to be his text? Fuck you. He's gonna just lay out this line of coke on you. That tree is gonna be in some four star restaurant. They're gonna call him parchment paper. Big Pompano in him. And you? 
or you, you're gonna be stuck in the fucking ground. Nowhere to go. Knowing that some fucking junkie is gonna wipe his ass with you and flush you down the east fucking river. I'm sorry as a fuck, man. I have something that I haven't told anyone. It doesn't involve letters or angels or anything like that. But you see, it means something very important to me. They were preparing my daughter Olivia to say goodbye. And my husband was out in the parking lot trying to calm my mother down because she had just about lost it. And I was sitting all alone in the hospital, in the waiting room, at Mamadi's Hospital. Yeah, that place. Oh my goodness. And there was a woman sitting next to me and she asked me who I was about to lose. And I told her. And she looked me right in the eyes and said to me, just be sure to notice the collateral beauty. She said it so casually, but in the next room, my six-year-old daughter was being taken off of life support. And this random woman in the waiting room says to me, collateral beauty? Some people just don't know what to say in situations like these. But no, she knew exactly what to say. I just didn't understand her at the time. You see, she didn't say it out of sympathy or awkwardness. She said it from her own personal life experience. About a year later, I'd be walking, on the, walking down the street, riding the subway, wherever I was, I would just break out into those uncontrollable tears. But those were not Olivia tears. Those were tears born from something else, something much bigger. Those were tears born from the profound connection that I was suddenly starting to have with everything in life around me. And you know, that's when I realized it was the collateral beauty. Old man's on Gary. She wants to buy you a drink. Is he sore? Look, he said he wants bygones to be bygones. You got a little wind burn. Uh, who won the game? I don't know. Who played? Uh, what's eating you? But the old man. He still thinks I have that money. Look, he started talking it up again on the way home. He said, what? He didn't buy a new car? He spent $500 a week on board? And this time, this time, he's using the Happy Time USA approach. I'll go down and talk to him. Yeah, you know, Johnny, it's been quite the morning. Which reminds me, did you tell her, you know, your wife? Your wife, for God's sake. Just, just give me a second, all right? I, you understand where I'm coming from. Just, just give me a second, all right? Yeah, I get you. But the old man, he'll wait a minute. Just, I give you my word, Polo, I will. But just not now, please. Yeah, well, John, you know, I'm going away. I don't know when. I'd like to leave tonight. Let, but I can't. Let the old man get back on his plane and go back to Palm Beach, yeah, all right? Yeah, 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 Palm Beach. You know what else is not going to Palm Beach? You and your wife. She stayed with me. Will you just leave me alone for a minute, please? Look, I, I'm staying. I've been a part of it. You feel tough, Polo? You think it's easy living with this, huh? Just, just, no. Just 
get out no, of there. No, please. no, no. You know what? Go ahead. Run. Like you always have. Will you just get away from the door, please? No. Johnny, look, nobody's gonna hate you. <laughs> what do you want me to tell him? It's like, hey, Dad, I'm a dope fiend. Hey, Dad, I'm a junkie. Oh, come on. All right, well, I'm hooked, all right? You don't, have to, say that. You don't have to say it that way. <laughs> Johnny! You don't have I, to say it that way. And I need it, like, what? Like, two, three times a day? It costs money? Oh, yeah, yeah, it costs money, Johnny. It costs Dad all his. Please don't say anything to him, please. Look, I can't no, deal with this anymore. I can't. Please. We gotta call a doctor. No, 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 no. Not, not until the old man goes, please. Look, Johnny, there's, 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 there's nothing, there's nothing to be ashamed of, okay? Every, everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be, everything's gonna be okay. Alright? Everything's gonna be alright. Where the hell you guys been? I've been downstairs whistling my brains out. Uh, we didn't hear you, Pop. Couldn't hear me, Pop. These bums of mine. Yeah. Bums. Yeah, Pop, your bums. Here we are. Uh, I used to be on the back porch whistling. I'd get every cat and dog in the neighborhood. But not you guys, right, Johnny? Right, Paulo? Yeah, yeah, you're right, Pop. Did your brother ever tell you the story? When uh, I come home one day, I look out the back window, and there's your brother digging a hole, looking in his pocket, digging a hole, looking in his pocket. I go out there, I go, what the hell are you doing? He said, be working, Daddy, be working. I told him, to put money in your pocket, you got to work hard. Dig a hole, look in his pocket. <laughs> a couple days later, I come home. It's pouring cats and dogs. So I go out there. He's got this great big hole. He's got his hat alongside of it. And I tell him, I, I convince him not to believe what I told him in the first place. So he looks up at me, picks up his hat. He puts his hat on, and the water goes running all over him. All that work, all he got was a hat full of rain. What are you guys so quiet about? Nothing, Pop. Everything's fine. Look, let me let me grab a little bit of the salt. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna use it too. Okay, Paul, well, you need that salt? Yeah, it needs it, Johnny. I thought I put it in. Look, look, we're, put, we're putting it in. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Soup is flat as Kelsey's. You know, Johnny cooked that soup. Let's not start the war over a Trojan war over a bowl of soup, huh? How'd you like the ball game, Dad? Oh, I'll tell you, when that Snyder steps up to the plate, Looks like he owns that ballpark. You ever get out to see a ball game, Johnny? No, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't really get out too much. You ought, to, you ought to get out in the air. Get out in the fresh air. It's good for you. What's going on, you guys? It's like the last supper. Did I say something we're, wrong? We're just a little tired. That's all. That's it. Talking again in uh, short answers. Yes, pop. No, pop. Pop, pop. It's your imagination. It's your imagination. Point. Let, let's just pretend that we are, I don't know, like a family at this point. What do you on. think, you know? Okay, let me finish what I want to say. You know, yesterday you gave me a pretty good working over. And today you started in again. You know, I, I didn't come here with my tail between my legs. But you guys, uh, you know, you're working me over pretty good. You didn't come through with that money you promised me either. But we're here now having dinner. So for Christ's sakes, let's sing a song or tell a couple jokes. Come on, let's have a couple laughs. I'm a junkie, Pop. Johnny's sick. You don't know what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. You mean you, you take dope? That's a junkie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. You knew about this? Yeah, all the time, Pop. I mean, where do you get it? How? Bill, you know what, Pop? Let's just forget it. Just just, just drop it. Forget it. I'm asking your brother a question. I'm not asking you for an answer. Well, I'm giving you one. Shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. You know, you better keep your hat on, Pop. What do you mean, keep my hat on? All right, all right, look, look, look. Let's just forget about this. Can we just can we just sit down and eat, please? And just, just, please. You knew about this all the time? Yeah. How yeah. long is all the time? Well, it's, uh, this time, it, I've been in for seven months and um, uh, last time uh, Polo he helped me he helped me out of the hospital and and I kicked it and um, and this he, time you mean there was another time yes, and you kicked it yeah I, just, well, I, I don't know just go to the public library and read up on it all right what do you what do you want me to do just well, explain everything I don't know whose fault this is and who's to blame but I'm gonna find out and you know about it so you talk me I don't know whose fault it is and at this point pop 
What difference does it make on who's to blame? Maybe it's my fault. Leave the kid alone. No. Just, it's, it's not right. You know, you took your brother in when he came home from the war. Yeah. And you've been living together for years. Yeah. Don't you think it's important that I know? You know now. I'm his father, for Christ's sakes. You don't think it's important to tell me that we have a junkie in the family? I would have beat the crap out of the both of you. Oh, Pop, you know what? No one's going to get beat up. And you know what? Especially not by you. Oh, really? Yeah, real. Let me tell you something. I better start getting some straight answers. Pop, will you just lay off, please? Just lay off. And don't, and don't, don't. I don't, I don't need you turning away from me. Like, I know what I am, okay? I can't understand how a boy like you... I know what I am, all right? What are you? I'm a junkie! Oh, you're gonna beat the hell out oh, of you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lay off him now, right? Lay off him. The kid's fucking trying at this point. Listen, I just, I just need you to understand, Pop. Please, I just... Please don't be angry with me, please. How can you sit just at this stop. table like this? Please, I... Like, I Look at him. Trying, Please, I'm just trying to say, will you just listen, please? Oh, get out of my way. Stop. I'm popping. Get out of my way. I'm trying warning. to tell you something, Pop, Pop, please. He's trying to tell you something, right? Him telling you, at this point, hasn't changed a damn thing. I can't believe at it. At this damn point, All it this hasn't time changed. you don't tell me that he's a junkie. It hasn't changed a damn thing, Pop. And you know what? He's still a junkie. He's sick, for Christ's sake. Can't, can't you understand that he's sick? I can't believe this. Get him. Come back here. Come back here, Johnny. He'll come back. He'll come back. Ran away. Yeah, yeah, he did. You know, Pop, he tried to come clean. He really did. He said this would be a good time to tell Pop. He's my brother. And he's your son. Accept it at this point. All I ever wanted was the best for the, the best. both of you. The best That's for all both I ever of wanted. Yeah, yeah, you know what, Pop? Now. Now you lost your dear boy, Johnny. Well done, Pop. Well done. Ladies, gentlemen, Mr. Polson has told you that the testimony of Sarah Tobias is nothing. Sarah Tobias was raped, but that's, that's nothing. She was cut, she was bruised, she was terrorized, but that's nothing. And it all happened in front of a howling crowd, and that's nothing. Well, it may mean nothing to Mr. Polson, but it does not mean nothing to Sarah Tobias. And I believe it means not, it doesn't mean nothing to you. Next, Mr. Paulson tries to convince you that Kenneth Joyce was the only one in that room that knew that Sarah Tobias was being raped. The only one. Now you watch Kenneth Jones. How did he strike you? Did he seem specially sensitive? especially observant? Did he seem so remarkable that you immediately said to yourselves, of course, this man can notice things others cannot. Do you believe that Kenneth Joyce saw something that the other three men didn't? The whole time Sarah Tobias was being held down on that pitiful machine, the others didn't know? Now, Kenny Joyce confessed that he watched the rape and did nothing. He said everybody in the bar behaved badly. He was right. But no matter how immoral it may be, it is not the crime of criminal solicitation to silently watch a rape. And it's not the crime of criminal solicitation to walk away from a rape. But it is the crime of criminal solicitation to induce, to entreat, 
to encourage, to pers persuade somebody to, to commit a rape. Hold her down, stick it to her, make her moan. These three men did worse than nothing. They clapped, they cheered, and they rooted the others on. They made sure that Sarah Tobias was raped and raped and raped. Now, tell me, is that nothing? You came down my dressing room. You said, Kid, this ain't unite. We're going for a price on Wilson. Remember that? Kid, this ain't unite. My night, I couldn't take Wilson apart. So, what happens? He gets a tunnel shot outdoors. What do I get? A one way ticket to Palookaville. You don't understand. You want my brother. She's taking care of me a little bit. She looked after me a little bit. Instead of being so worried about taking dives for short end money. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody. Instead of a bug, which is what I am, let's face it. It wasn't him, it was you. Oh, for what? The hundred dollars or whatever the hell it is you make with that guy? I trained seven days a week in that gym. I didn't step into the ring to win, all right? I played your game. I stepped in that gym to win. Whatever happened to the guy, the big shot, the promises that you made, it's all a waste. How many smokers did we do? How many sparring matches did we do? All the conversations we had. You promised, you said we'd take it all. And I did step into the ring to take the win. What would dad think if he knew what you were doing? All for what? tell that you're in pain. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Did you know that I had a wife? So beautiful, isn't she? We were pregnant with our first child and we were just babies ourselves really and I was terrified becoming a father, mostly about money, but she wasn't worried. She had faith that things were going to work out. She always had faith. Then, um, one day she was going to go visit a friend and there was an accident. And the Lord take it. And they rushed me to a hospital and they put me in a room with this little pink bundle stuffed with tubes and they told me that I had to be strong because my little girl was going to live. God was looking out for our daughter. And they left me alone in the room with her and I just stared at my daughter. So helpless so innocent and all she had in the world was me a nobody from nowhere with nothing and in that moment I knew that God was testing me he was laying out a path for me and all I had to do was choose 
And so I put my hand on my little girl's head and I leaned in and I could smell. And we prayed together. We prayed for wisdom. We prayed for strength. And in that moment I knew And I heard God's plan for me. So I took my fingers and I put that on the little plastic tube that was taped to her angelic face and I pinched it shut. After a little while, her legs began to kick and kick and then nothing. Stillness, release. Lord give it and the Lord take it. Pain, sacrifice, these are all part of his test. We have to prove that we can serve God no matter what he asks. so surprised. Why am I not surprised? I thought you were getting your act together. I have gotten my act together. I was just drinking. You know, I've been doing really well, actually. Not that anybody ever seems to notice. My grades are better. I was even in that stupid play that you guys didn't even bother to come see. Do you even remember the name of it? That's what I thought. So what if I got drunk on the one night you came to visit me? So fucking what? Hey, watch your language. Anyway, look, it's nice to see you. Welcome home. You want some eggs? Helen. Hiya. Hey. Can I talk to you for a minute? She didn't tell me anything. I really need to talk to you. I'll call you back. All right, I'll see you later. Sid's coming over. Who's Sid? A really good friend from Puna Hall. We run school together for years. Okay. He wants to be here for me with all this shit happening. Do I know his parents? Nope. Listen to me, I, your mother is not doing well. Obviously. No, they just told me she's not gonna wake up. She's, the doctors are gonna stop caring for her. She, that, this, she wanted it this way. <clears throat> she has this will. You see, she has this will that says that we have to do it this way, we both do. Understand what I'm saying? Listen, that's why I got you. Honey, we're letting her go. Al Alex. What? Alex, what do you listen. want? I just found out yesterday. We have to go through this thing together. You, me, and, and Scotty. And I have to go around and tell people what's happening. Family and a few close friends. Uh, and, I, I, and I'm gonna need you to come with me sometimes. Sometimes I'm gonna need you to, to watch Scotty. You want me to go around with you 
and tell people that mom is gonna die? What is the point of that? Breaking the news, watching them cry, dealing with their emotions? God, how depressing is that gonna be? Listen, Just I, call them. I, nobody wants to do any of this. But we have to tell your grandpa and Tutu and a few friends. They have the right to know. I mean, they have the right to say goodbye. No, I don't want to talk about mom with anyone. Listen, whatever you fought about over Christmas, forget it. Drop it. Grow up. Your mother loves you. You love your mother. I can't drop you it. You have to. You really don't have a clue, do you? Dad, mom was cheating on you. That's what we fought about. When I was home for Christmas, I caught her with a guy. It made me sick to see her near you. I went back to school thinking that that was it. I was just done with her. I was gonna call you and tell you everything. And then the accident happened. I was just waiting until she woke up, I guess. God, you didn't even suspect, right? Right? A quarter with a guy. What does that mean, a quarter with a guy? I saw my way to swim in the Black Point pool with Brandy and all of a sudden, I see mom and some douchebag walking into a house. His house, I guess. No guy could be anybody. No, he had his hand on her ass. It was gross. Then what? Well, then nothing. I mean, I went into the house. And a few days later, I told her I knew what she was doing. And? When at first, she acted like she had no fucking idea what I was talking about. Like I'm blind or something. And she got like really mad and yelled and denied it. And that was when I decided I didn't want anything more to do with her. Who is he? I don't know, some guy. What does he look like? Dark hair. Watch your sister. Okay, you guys, you gotta hear what happened to me on Bird Street down by the river. I was standing there, looking around, like you see me do that, just looking around, minding my own business, watching the world go by. When this dude walks up with a scraggly chick on his arm, he whips out a gun and sticks it in my face. Big gun too. And he cocks back the hammer and he says, all right, you ready for this? You're not gonna believe this. You know what he says? your money or your life. I mean, honest to God, for a second I thought, how does this guy keep a straight face? Your money or your life? He <laughs> was like that skinny guy in those old Bogart movies, used to wear you know, black shirt, white tie, nervous sort, uh, Peter something, not Peter Lorre, but somebody like that. It's, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So I'm standing there with this gun in my face and he says, your money or your life? And I say, well, man, you got to take my life, man, because I got no money. I wasn't trying to be funny. <laughs> it was true. I had no money. Well, scraggly chick, she busts out laughing. <laughs> and she looks at him, and he starts laughing, too, all crazy-like. And then they walk away. I mean, what do you think of that? I'll say this. Something like that really gets your heart beating. It's like you're walking through life half asleep and somebody comes up and sticks a gun in your face and for just those few seconds, you're alive again. You feel every nerve ending vibrate. You look up and you can almost hear the white clouds pushing across the sky so blue, 
it hurts your eyes. You know what I mean? I probably should thank those two for bringing me back to life, but I won't. The fact is, I'd like to see them arrested, thrown in jail for a long time. Elijah Cook Jr., that's the guy I was trying to think of. Black shirt, white tie, nervous sort. <laughs> he was good. So, a crisis. Insoluble problem, major crisis. Both stepmothers want their names on a wedding invitation. <laughs> Catherine adores her stepmother, who more or less brought her up. She wants her name on the invitation. She wants it, and her stepmother is not anticipating, which is understandable because the mother is dead, not appearing next to Catherine's father. Whereas my stepmother, whom I detest, it's out of the question that her name should appear on the card. But my father won't have his name on it if hers isn't, unless Catherine's stepmother is left off, which is completely unacceptable. So I suggested, that none of the parents' names should be on it. After all, we're not adolescents. We can announce our wedding and invite people ourselves if Catherine screamed that off. <laughs> Arguing that that would be a slap in the face to her mother who had gone through, or her parents who had gone through so much trouble and, had, and paying for the nose for the reception, and particularly for her stepmother who has gone through so much trouble, considering she's not even her daughter. So, finally, I let myself be persuaded, totally against my better judgment. <laughs> because she wore me down. I finally agreed that my mother, my stepmother, whom I detest, <laughs> who's a complete bitch, <laughs> will appear on the invitation. So I called my mother to warn her. <laughs> mother, I said, I've done everything I can to avoid this. We have absolutely no choice. Yvonne's name must be on this invitation. And she said, if Yvonne's name is on the invitation, take mine off. And I said, Mother, please, I beg you, don't make this more difficult. And she said, how dare you suggest my name is left to float around on a card like some abandoned woman below Yvonne who'll be clamped onto your father's surname like a limit. I said, Mother, I have friends waiting for me. I I'm going to hang up now. And we'll, we'll discuss all this in the morning after a good night's sleep. And she said, why is it I'm always an afterthought? <laughs> Mother, what are you talking about? You're not always an afterthought. Yes, I am. Of course I am. And when you say everything's already been decided, everything's been decided behind my back. Everything's been organized without me. Everything's been cooked up behind my back. Good old, you get. She'll agree to anything. And all this, she said, to put the old tin lid on it, <laughs> in aid of an event the importance of which I am having trouble understanding. I said, Mother, I have friends waiting for me. Of course. There's always something better to do. Anything's more than important than I am. Goodbye. And she hung up. <laughs> Catherine, who was next to me, <laughs> but who had not heard her side of the conversation, said, what did she say? I, I said, she, she just doesn't want her name on the invitation with Yvonne, which is understandable. I'm not talking about that. What did she say about the wedding? <laughs> Nothing. You're lying. I'm not, Kathy, I swear, I promise. She just doesn't want her name on the invitation next to Yvonne. Call her back and tell her that when your, your son is getting married, you rise above your vanity. I, you could say the same thing to your stepmother. That's got nothing to do with it, she said. Screaming. It's me. I'm the one insisting her name is on it. It's not her poor thing. She's half personified. If she had any idea of the problem this was causing, she'd be on her knees begging to be taken off the invitation. Now call your mother! So I called her again. By now, I'm, I'm in shreds. Catherine's listening on the extension. Ivan. Up to now. 
you've handled your affairs in the most chaotic way imaginable. And just because, out of the blue, you decided to embark on matrimony, I find myself obliged to spend all afternoon and evening with your father, a man I haven't seen in 17 years, and to whom I was not expecting to reveal my hip size and my puffy cheeks. Not to mention Yvonne, who, I may tell you, according to Felix Parolari, is now taking up bridge. My mother also plays bridge. <laughs> I can see none of this can be helped. But on the invitation, the one item everyone is going to receive and examine, I insist on making a solo appearance. And Catherine, listening on the extension, shakes her head and screws up by something disgusting. Mother, I said, why are you so selfish? I'm not selfish! I'm not selfish! <laughs> Ivan, you're not going to start too. You're not going to be like Madame Romero this morning who said, that I have a heart of stone. That everybody in our family has a heart of stone. That everybody in our family has a heart of stone. That's what Madame Romero said this morning when I refused to raise her wages. She's gone out of her head, by the way. To 20 bucks an hour, tax-free. That's what Madame Romero said. She had a gall, the gall, to say everybody in our family has a heart of stone. When she knows very well about poor Andre's pacemaker. You know, you haven't even bothered to drop him a line. Oh, yeah, it's very funny, very funny. I see. It's a joke. Everything's a joke to you. Ha, ha, ha. You know, I'm not the one being selfish, Ivan. You got a lot to learn about in life, boy. So off you go. Go on, go on, go on. Go and see your precious friends. <laughs> what do you think? There isn't one of them here that says I want to be a movie star. There isn't one of them here that says, Prince, what, you, what can you do for me? There isn't one, it's all honesty. And because it's honesty, it works. And you feel it, right? They threw something at you tonight, no? Okay, it's called honesty. Let's bring it up. Come on, guys. Stand up and get it for me. Thanks.
Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you, awesome. thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh. thank you, you were great. Oh my God. I got some great video. You're gonna oh, enjoy you. it. You thank really, you. and all the improv. Oh, that was, that was, that was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. French yeah, accent yeah, too, right? Very good. We're gonna talk about more. David, thank you very much. Wonderful place. Thank you. Love you, bro. Brian, congratulations. Yeah, you did a great job. Yeah, right. Great, great, great job, Brian. Like, so off the cuff. Wow. 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 Wow.
good. I want to see my guest. No, this is my daughter right here, my daughter Kelly. Me too. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was blocking eyes. All three of them are tourists. My mom's a tourist. Your mom's a tourist. What day? She's baseball like that. May 12th. Okay. Wow. Thank you. I believe it. Nice to meet you, Josh. <laughs> Fabulous job. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, you make the round. If you have footage, send it to me if you can. Yeah, what I'm going to do is it's all going to be on one file. I'm going to send it to the Okay, great. So I need to get your email. All right? I have you on Instagram, so I can send you my email address. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give you a card so you have it right here. Okay. here. All right? I just got to get it. Get it. All right? I'll, I'll circle back. We're going to circle Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Circle back. Good. Yeah, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll come back. Thank you. Sorry I haven't been a good no. friend and stuff, but I, I'm taking this video for the group, you know, and... And I wanted Are to. Are still recording? Yeah, I'm still recording. My I'm gonna stop it. I'm job, gonna Bruce. stop it right now. Beautiful job, Brian. Brian. Great. Beautiful uh, job. Yeah. And Brian. Yeah, and Brian. Yeah, lots very of intention. Lots, lots of lot of intention. Sure there's a lot of substitution. This is a beautiful story. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful job.